Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be looking at booleans and optionals, okay? Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about the booleans in Zig, which is pretty much what you would expect. Um, there are only two uh, predefined values for the bool type in, in Zig. The type is called bool, and that would be uh, true and false, as you see right here, okay? Uh, if you ever find a need to turn uh, a boolean into an integer, you can do that with the uh, int from bool built-in, as you can see here. And this basically converts true to the integer 1 and false to the integer 0. Okay, And that's pretty much it for booleans. It's a pretty simple uh, type. Now we're going to talk about optionals, which are uh, uh, much more interesting. Uh, optional is the type in Zig that uh, provides what's known uh, in many languages as null safety. Um, in Zig, uh, the only uh, way uh, a value can be null is if that value is of type optional. Okay, and uh, to declare that a type is optional, you prefix it with the question mark, as you as you see here. This this instead of being just a U8, it's an optional U8 because it has uh, the question mark, okay? So the variable maybe byte is an optional U8, and here we're setting it to the predefined value null, okay? The only uh, type that can uh, be the value null is uh, the optional type, and you can have optional of anything. Uh, this could be uh, a signed integer, a float, or any of the other uh, data structures and, and, and types that we're gonna be uh, seeing they can all be optional here we're setting the same variable to the value 42 okay so now uh, this would be the u8 42 and we print it out okay um, here we're using uh, the question mark in another way um, when you have an optional and you want to assert that it's not null you can use uh, the dot question mark operation um, this basically will produce an error if it is null, so you have to be uh, careful uh, when you're using uh, this operation. You basically has to be in a context where you know you, you can you can certify that the the optional is not null, or on purpose um, you're using this to detect if there's like an error condition in the logic of your program, and. Um, this assertion that it's not null will fail and produce an error okay here we're seeing a keyword a new keyword which is or else which allows us to basically have like a default default value mechanism in zig when you have an optional uh you can apply this or else operator it's actually an operator um and if the optional is null then uh, the the result of this expression is going to be whatever uh, y you're uh, specifying after the or else. In this case, since maybe byte is a U8, but we're, spe we're specifying an, uh, an integer here, an unsigned integer, 13. So if maybe byte is null, um, the byte over here is going to receive the value 13. If it isn't null, it'll receive the payload of maybe byte, which uh, is a U8, okay? So uh, the byte here um, is guaranteed to be a U8. It's not gonna be an optional because or else will handle the case where uh, it's null and, and provide instead the number 13, okay? Now we're gonna take a look at the if uh, conditional statement. Uh, basically for a control flow of execution um, it, I'm, I'm presenting if here with with the, the topic of bulls and and optionals because uh, the if statement is basically the the, the primary place where you're going to be using uh, booleans and optionals here uh, we see an example of a simple if else if and else this is pretty much what you find in, in any other uh, programming language um, in Zig, you have to use the parentheses for the condition. Um, here we're testing T, uh, which we, we it was a boolean that was uh, set at the beginning. If it's true, we're gonna execute this uh, branch. Uh, otherwise, we have an else if here, which with uh, is another uh, conditional. 
here in this case we're testing f which is going to be false because we defined it as false so basically this will never execute and finally if all else fails we have the final else and this is uh, the branch that will be executed in in that uh, circumstance okay here we see uh, how we can also use if with optionals when we use uh, an optional as the condition if the optional is not null, we basically capture the payload of the optional here between the pipes, okay? So um, if maybe byte is not null, B is going to receive the payload that's within maybe byte. And inside this branch that's going to get executed, as it says here in the comment, uh, B is guaranteed not to be, it's not an optional, B is a U8, okay? We it, it's the, the, the child uh, type uh, within the optional. Um, otherwise, the else branch is going to be executed, and we know here that maybe byte is in effect null. Here we have an example of using maybe byte as a condition, and we are not really interested in the payload, so uh, within the pipes we just have uh, the underscore, one more use of that underscore uh, special identifier. Um, and in here, we, we're basically just uh, printing out a, a message without any type of payload. Here we have an example uh, demonstrating how we can compare with the equality operator um, uh, may, uh, an optional to null. Only optionals can be compared to null in Z. Okay, so here we have uh, once again this condition, and uh, if it's null, uh, this is uh, the code that's going to be executed. Okay, if you have a simple uh, if statement um, that only has a single branch on success of the condition, if the condition is true, and it's uh, just uh, like a single statement, you can uh, pretty much turn it into a white liner like this in Zig. That's no problem. And in Zig, uh, the if is a uh, you can use an if as an expression okay um, so here we have an example of what would be in zig the version of the ternary operator uh, that you can find in other languages i can see well in zig you can use an if in that situation here the byte is uh, gonna uh, have uh, the value here of the payload of maybe byte if it's true uh, this is the, the branch that will be uh, executed otherwise it will receive uh, zero and as we saw earlier uh, the or else uh, operator basically uh, is like a convenience uh, that provides this same functionality so this uh, uh, if, if statement here or if expression sorry um, is basically the same as this um, expression using or else when it when it uh, when we're talking about uh, an optional but the if you can also use the if with uh, boolean uh, as an expression when you are using uh, the if as an expression um, the curly braces are not allowed okay it's important to remember that um, so here we're assigning the result of this if if expression to a variable so this this definitely has to be an expression and uh, we're basically uh, demonstrating here making it a multi-line if but as you can see we're not using the uh, curly braces and uh, that's a requirement when you're using the if as an expression okay and another thing we're demonstrating here is uh, once you uh, basically assert here with the not equals that maybe byte isn't null then uh, by using the logical and operator, which in Zig is the, the word and, the keyword and. And as you might guess, uh, if, if, it's for, if it's logical or, it's, it's the word or, the keyword or. Uh, but in this case, we're using logical and. Uh, if it isn't null, then we can basically uh, safely use here the question mark uh, operation here um, to assert that it isn't null because we already did that test here uh, with, the, with the not equals operator and we're now testing if in effect that payload is equal to 42 so this is like a combined conditional uh, with an optional an example of how to do that 
and uh, finally we are printing out uh, the value of the byte okay so uh, let's take a look at that output so uh, this is basically it for uh, booleans and optionals and if uh, if conditionals in Zig. It's pretty simple, straightforward, really intuitive. And this is one of the things that many people uh, coming to Zig from other languages really like because it's, it's so straightforward when you're dealing with uh, these data types. Okay, so uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.